today I'm going to be making Battenberg. I hope you like it. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is to make up the marzipan. So, in this bowl here I have ground almonds. I have blanched almonds. The only thing to remember with marzipan is the finer your almonds, the finer the marzipan at the end of it. So, here we go. I'm going to do this quickly because I've done this before on video. Next, I've got icing sugar. Uh, confectioner sugar if you're in America. Then I have just regular granulated sugar here. I'll put the measurements up as I speak. Right, I'm just going to give those a bit of a zhuzh together. Not hard to do, really easy. Marzipan is easy to make yourself and I've got to tell you, so much cheaper and nicer than shop bowl. Right, into that we're going to put a raw egg. Now I won't worry too much about the raw egg because we are going to be putting lemon juice into this. There we go, that's two teaspoons of lemon juice. Now the lemon juice effectively will cook the egg. The last thing I'm going to be putting in is about a teaspoon of almond essence. Now there's nothing more simple than this. All you've got to do is bring it all together into a dough. So I usually start off with a wooden spoon and then finish off with my hand and bring it to a bowl. You might have noticed I've got a new mat. Yay. Right, I'm going to get what I've got off my spoon. There we go. And then I'm going to get in here with my hand. It can get a bit sticky, but it's not a problem. Now we do this first because I want this to chill right down. Because this is going to be the coating on our Battenberg cake. And it needs to be rolled out. So I need to be able to put this in the fridge so that the almonds, um, the oil in the almonds, uh, recedes and settles and what have you. There we go. Easy as that. Marzipan made. <laughs> you can't get much easier than that, can you? Here we go, and this is in grams, I'm afraid. But now that makes half a kilo. Half a kilo. What's that? 1.1 pounds, just over, of marzipan at a fraction of the cost of buying it. How about them apples? Right, so, plastic bag, pick it up. In, there we go. Now, I'm going to refrigerate this while I make the cake. While we're chilling down the marzipan, we're going to crack on with the cake and get that cooked. Now I'm using a Battenberg tin. Um, I think I bought this for around five euros, something on Amazon. It's not a problem if you don't have a Battenberg tin. If you've got a small tin, you can actually just make one divider um, from a bit of cardboard wrapped in foil put down the middle of it and you can put cake of different colours both sides and then cut them up later. I'll show you how to do that. Now all I've done is lined my Battenberg tin and I've oiled the slats. Now if you make your own divider you'll need to oil that as well or you can have trouble getting your cake out at the end. The cake I'm making is like a Madeira cake but we're going to make pink and we're going to make white. So, 
In goes my flour and two teaspoons of baking soda or baking powder rather. Sugar. Butter. Now I've left this on the packet because it is so warm in my kitchen at the moment. So chuck that in. I thought if I put it in one of these in one of these bowls I would never get it out. It is so soft, but softened butter is what you need for this. Next I have three eggs going in. Here we go. They're just medium sized eggs. Finally, two tablespoons of milk. Now that's all I'm putting in here at the moment. So I'm going to whisk this together until it's just combined. Now that didn't take long at all. What you want to bear in mind is over whisking, oh, there goes a bit of my cake. Over whisking this um, will result in a grainy cake. So you literally just want to blend this until it comes together like that. Here we go, like this. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is divide this in half. So I'm going to put half in this bowl over here. And to do that, I'm going to be using my large ice cream scoop. Oh, I mark it first. That's sort of half-ish. There you go. I'm going to nick that bit to go in there. It's around about half each. So take half out. and then leave the rest in this bowl here. This is plenty to fill your, um, this is plenty to fill your baking tray for the size that I've given you there. Right, I'm just gonna knock this one back a tad. Into this one, um, I'm going to be putting a couple of drops of red food colouring. Literally, oh, sometimes I overdo this. Really not good. I'm also using, this is organic raspberry food flavouring. Now I like this, but it's not needed particularly for this recipe. Oh, so. Give it a bit of a squirt of raspberry. All I'm going to do now is just blend that very quickly. There we go, nice pink cake, which is what we want. So I'm going to clean this off, take it off my mixer, and lick my hand because that tastes really good. In this bowl, I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla essence. I knocked this over earlier, it was a full thing. I've made such a mess, it's untrue. Right, I'm just going to mix this in, just turn it over by hand. That's it. How easy was that? Well, as you can see, I've got cake mix everywhere, as usual. <laughs> what can you do? Next thing I'm going to do is literally fill my Battenberg tins. So, so, using another scoop. Oh, I dropped a bit there, so I'll do this side. Make sure your paper stays up like that. Excuse my fingers. Now, there'll be enough mix to fill two sides of this, or if you're making your own divider, 
fill a whole side with this mix. I'm just trying to get them pretty much the same. There we go. Make sure you fill, oh. Make sure you fill this right to the edges or the ends and that it's gone all the way like that. One done, next. I'm gonna turn this around so I don't drop it. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> drop it into there. I'm using my ice, smallest ice cream scoop this time because I need to be a bit more careful that I don't get it on the other side. Here we go. Now I want to put the cake mix in round about the same height as I've put the other side. Okay, now I'm all done. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a tap. It's gone right to the edges, which is great. I'm now gonna cook this in my oven on 180 degrees. I'll put the other temperatures up in a moment. Um, for 25 to 30 minutes, I believe. And then I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna leave it completely cool in the tin. This recipe is in my book, by the way. Um, and I've also got illustrative photographs to show you how to do this in case you get yourself in a bit of a pickle. I'll see you when this is cooked and cooled. So here are my cakes, all cooked and ready to go. All I'm gonna do is just loosen the edges where I've got these dividers. Because what I need to do now is get these out. <laughs> and this is, this is why I've got a board here because it's a lot easier to do like this. First of all, I want the tin off, oh, if I can. Get it. Here we go. Let's go in. It's a lot easier to do with two hands. There we go. That's my tin. Now I need to turn it over and I'm gonna take it off of here because what I need to do is peel this back and get my dividers out without breaking my cake which is quite often easier said than done okay so we're doing this for real just make sure I've cut down the oh yes I have look at that Right, here come my dividers out. There's one. <gasps> oh, maybe stuck a tad there. Just do this carefully. That went really well, didn't it? Okay, now what we need to do is get these off of the paper. So I'm gonna push one backwards. There we go, and turn it round. Next, oh, and turn it round. I'm going to put them together like this because I just need to trim them. <gasps> don't drop, don't break, don't break. What I need to do is just trim these now. Oh, it's going to be the hardest one, isn't it? There we go, sorted. Straight in the bin. Right, what we're going to do now is trim these so that they're around the same size. Now I've got a really big knife because what I would quite like to do, oh, I have to turn that over. Yeah, that's probably best for this one. This is the end. So what I need to do is just trim that bit off and put it to one side. These can actually be used for trifles and whatnot, so you don't have to wreck them. 
completely. Again, just that top crust is coming off. And if I can do that, in theory, they should all be around the same size. I'm saving those. There we go. Another one. They do look very even at the moment. They do now, look. There we go. So we're just going to continue and take it just that very top bit off. And I will use these to make trifle. There we go. This is the same as the other end, isn't it? So I'm going to turn it that way because it's easier to cut. What we want is the square bit. We don't want the bit that's risen too much there. There we go. And reserve. So we've now got our four pieces. Now I'm going to move these right out to one side. And I'm going to wipe down my side because the next thing we're going to do is roll out our marzipan. And we really need... The next thing we're going to do is roll out our marzipan and what we really need is for our work mat to be as clean as we can get it. I've got a piece of kitchen paper here and it's about, I've got 21 inches here because I've gone way over the top, but you only need about eight, 16 to 18 inches. And I'm going to sprinkle icing sugar all over here. So, here we go. Ooh. Plenty of icing sugar, because what we're going to do is roll the marzipan out. And the last thing I want is for it to be too sticky on there. So there we go, I've put icing all over my paper. I'm now going to get out my marzipan. Oh not good doing this um, live to be honest <laughs> there's so much that can go wrong isn't there <laughs> that there you go that's me all over the idea is to show you how I do it and this is how I do it right I'm just giving my marzipan a bit of a knead so it all gets together nicely I'm trying to form it into a very short log because I'm going to roll this now. Here we go. So I'm going to plop it in the middle and I'm going to just make sure it's squared off a bit. I'm going to dust that with icing sugar because otherwise it's going to stick to my rolling pin. Here we go. And First of all, gonna go outwards. Now you can see I'm doing this little bits at a time because what I'm trying to do is keep it square-ish. Because it's got a bit of a ways to go. There we go. Go that way. And then that way. Now we want to get this really long enough to go round the cake and wide enough to go right to the edges. Don't worry about dusting it off, that's fine. You will need to do that. You can use corn flour for this as well, but I just prefer to use the icing sugar. Right, let's see. That's about the width I need. Now I want length because this has got to go all the way around, don't forget. So take your time with this bit and get it sort of straight. I tend to go a tad wider than I want because I know when you buy a, 
Battenberg. It doesn't really have um, marzipan on the ends, but I tend to fold mine in and it helps keep it keep the cake fresh. And if you like marzipan, you can have the end bit. There you go. I've got one of these trimmy things, so I am just going to tidy up my edge like this. You can use these bits for other things if you want to. I've got so much stuff in there. It's ridiculous. In this bowl, I've got some apricot jam. What I'm going to do, I've just broken it down and then mixed it with a little bit of warm water because this is for our cake, cake and it also gives it a wonderful flavour. You should really sieve this I suppose. Um, I've put that in my recipe book to sieve but don't worry too much about it. Right first piece of cake going on there we go and put it a little way away from there now that's one of my pink bits now I need a white bit and then all you've got to do is jam down there you make sure that every last bit has jam on it don't be shy with it this will do two things it will stick it all together and again will help keep your cake nice and moist we don't want it all falling apart do we as we cut it there we go get me ends done if you're not going to marzipan right up to the edges, don't bother doing this bit at all because you're not going to stick anything to it. Right, I'm going to pull those together now, nice and tight. Look at that, beautiful. Now, I don't need to jam the bottom of this piece and I'm going to plump it on top of my pink one and line it up. There we go. I do however need to jam this bit. So there we go and don't forget to do this end bit although we've got some on the marzipan itself it's better to make sure you've coated all the cake because it's quite absorbent and again I don't want it all falling to bits. When we've got that bit done we put our final piece on and again this is now the pink. So I've got different squares with different colours. Line it up. A cloth is handy for your hands literally. Now all I've got to do is the top of this one. And the sides and that front edge. So here we go. And here comes the exciting bit now. You take those lumps out. Because I don't particularly want those there. I'm going to take my sheet of paper at the end and I'm going to pull it up and over my cake. And now I'm going to just squidge that together a bit. Oh, here we go. Can you see? Now we're going to go over again. Now we need to make sure everything is together here and lined up nicely. There we go. That's not too shabby at all. Now we've got the final turn. Take the paper. I'm going to jam here. Do 
just to make sure everything's done. Now again, carefully turn over. Now you've got all the sides covered with your marzipan. Final turn, and I'm at the end, and there's my top. Now that was actually really easy to do, wasn't it? Now I'm going to turn my paper around. It's easier to turn the paper around <laughs> than it is to turn the whole cake around. All I'm going to do is fold these edges in like a parcel. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but that doesn't matter because they're the end bits. And just squid your icing, your, um, your marzipan back together again if you need to. I'm going to use my little spatula to go underneath there and push it up. Then I'm going to use my fingers to just push it in nicely there. There we go. That's an end bit. It's very warm in here and my marzipan's falling to bits a bit. But look how easy it is to just put that back together again. Other end, push it in. Now I've already jammed this, so this is going to be very easy to do. And the marzipan will start to go a bit floppy because we've rolled it out lots. There we go, up and push it in. There we go. Now, just going to push that together. Looks like little cracks there, but they're not going to be there by the time I've done the next bit. Don't worry too much. Take this end of your paper and roll it over. There we go. Now this is my bottom seam and I'm just going to push it together a bit there so it doesn't come undone. Now I'm going to wrap it up. So bottom over, turn, 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 turn to the end of your paper. There you go. Now you can reshape and I'm going to wrap this all up. both parcel and I'm going to rest this in the fridge for an hour before I cut it. Well, my cake is all chilled down as you can see, so let's have a look and see how we're doing. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, that's the bottom. And look, there you go. That's my cake, all nice and set. All we've got to do now is try some. I'm going to cut a bit off. Oh, and take a look at this. Look at that. Now that fat that colour in the summer. I keep this in the fridge because it gets so hot in my kitchen. In the winter, what I'll do is put this um, in an airtight tin, biscuit tin, whatever tin you've got. Now look at this. Beautiful. I am so pleased with that. See, it's not hard to do, and look, I've got my squares in the right places. Could have done with a tad more pink colouring, I think, for the contrast. But there we go. I'm going to cut this in half. Oh, look at it. Mmm. That is light as a feather. Beautiful. Mmm. I know some people put icing 
around the squeeze but you really don't need that that would make it so sweet this is gorgeous oh that is beautiful mm. oh can't argue with that now bear in mind the recipe is in my book which is available on all platforms on Amazon there are some brilliant recipes in there really pleased and I'm currently working on a second book anyway if you enjoyed my video please like share and subscribe to see me making more cost-effective delicious everyday food Thank you for watching.